Hello again. It's video time, and uh, I'm not going to bore you this time with any more Corona rants. Um, I'm here in San Cristobal, de la Casa, on a nice, beautiful mound, if you can see here. And I thought it would be an appropriate time to discuss something a little bit different. Um, for you guys that know, uh, for various reasons, usually my own stubbornness could be to blame. To blame? I don't know if that's the right word. Either way, uh, I've been to seven universities now. Um, most of the reasons aren't a result of my own uh, uh, inability to complete each, but rather the uh, ill-effectiveness of those institutions, their own mistakes, the lack of intellectual capacity, especially in regards to administration. I mean, for instance, the first one I had to quit because uh, the four staff members that ran it, one unfortunately passed away, and then the leader of the course quit, so 50% of the degree program was replaced by uh, quick replacements, you know, um, internal promotions and upgrades, people that didn't actually have the uh, experience or knowledge in that particular field, which was journalism at the time. Um, then... <laughs> the greatest one to this date, good God, I'm still fighting them to this day, it took me a year and a half, freedom of information request, Goldsmiths University by the way, um, because that institution is the epitome of indoctrination for political gain, um, it is a representation of fake lefty politics for the purpose of ensuring that these fresh students that undertake these programs are, are kind of um, indefinitely submissive to the state. I mean, that's really what it's all about. I mean, Goldsmiths University is a facade. It's, I could rant forever about it, but it's essentially where people that want to dress in Alibaba pants go, having completed a one-year gap exchange in Kenya. Um, they do subjects like anthropology, creative writing, gender study. I mean, gender study, come on. You know, in Hungary, they made gender studies illegal uh, on, well, it's no longer public, publicly financed, quite rightly. Why should the taxpayer pay for such a ludicrous program? Um, then after that, uh, I briefly enrolled in um, aviation management, but having already completed some years and due to finance and uh, the number of years that you can actually uh, be financed for by the government in higher education, I opted to skip a year, which they accepted me on, but then after I got there, and this is this is about as dim as it gets for university, after I was accepted and I was actually at the university on the first day, they said, oh my god, we're so sorry, we can't skip you to the second year, because this course only started this year. I was like, oh, cheers for that, so you've just, whatever. Anyway, so they gave me a little bit of compensation for that, but virtually nothing. Um, of course, you can't fight these institutions, because unless you have the capital to do so, you know, it would drag on for years and years and years, and it's just not worth your time. So then I went to uh, another university um, in London um, to undertake a programme in education um, and that just went to absolute shit. Exactly the same problem. Uh, I was on campus for one month living there um, and they had some issues again with finance issues of skipping me a year or whatnot. Uh, in the end they did accept me and they said, oh, it's all okay now. But by that time I you know, missed a, a month of work and I was like, go oh, fuck yourselves. So, they refunded me a whole month of rent in London, so it was basically a free month of partying. Then I briefly went back to Goldsmiths, shithole, ill mistake, uh, left, went to the university that I'm at now, and I've just completed an exchange abroad in the US, uh, completed, <laughs> uh, well, because of COVID, but uh, what I really wanted to talk about is the lies of this idea that university culture, you know, this rape culture thing, I'm just going to go straight into it. Um, this is an appropriate time to talk about it, uh, so long as it doesn't rain. This guy's looking a bit shit. But, uh, you know, all these YouTube videos, these media sources, all of this is propaganda, by the way. There's absolutely no evidence to substantiate it. And I'm glad you're watching this. If you're interested in knowing this, you can't possibly tell me that you know one other person that's been to seven universities. You, ha you don't, full stop. And by the time I finish with my master's and PhD program, it would be ten. And that's not a boast, I'm just saying, through 
going to different universities in different parts of the country and the world, I'm able to give you a broad uh, idea of the reality, you know, the truth, if you like. So, the idea of this whole rape and sexual assault culture at university is a complete fucking lie, and uh, the reason it exists is because of the extreme sexism in universities against men. Um, and you're thinking, oh god, if you're an extreme feminist, go fuck yourself. Feminism is nonsense. You know, if you generally believe in equality, you don't need to segregate and separate yourself under one specific agenda. I mean, all of these societies, the LGBT, you know, Black History Month, white supremacist groups, any society that seeks to separate itself from the rest of humanity is an oppressive force. You don't believe in equality. If you believed in equality, you wouldn't, you know, <laughs> separate yourselves and, and, and restrict the possibility of others from a, with a different creed or background from, from joining your little inner circle and group. You know, the whole thing is nonsense. So go fuck yourself if you're a feminist, Black History Month supporter, white supremacist, whatever, LGBT, the whole thing's nonsense. You, know, you should be able to interact with people that are gay, straight, bisexual, black, brown, white, without, you know, what the fuck? Just use your brain. Anyway, uh, before I go on a tangent, um, yeah, so, God, I've, I've have gone on a tangent, I've lost myself a little bit. This, this idea of, you know, rape culture and sexual assaults happening, it's complete nonsense. All I've seen in, in the time I've been there, and of course, you know, it's anomalies happen. You know, if you take 10,000 students, you put them in one place, it's like 10,000 people outside of the university. You're going to get crime, you know, robbery, you know, extreme crime. Sometimes people get murdered on campuses. That's the reality of living in a society. It's not perfect. Stuff's going to happen. It's not a representation of university culture. It's a representation of just society in general. Um, so I want to take you back. Um, I'm not going to name anyone on this video because uh, I still interact with some of the people that have suffered. And uh, they're friends of mine. Some of them haven't, haven't suffered, luckily, because they have the will and fortitude to, to, uh, to, to, to push on. That's not to say the others don't. Um, it's on a case-by-case -case basis, isn't it? When I was at Goldsmiths University, in my flat, um, two former friends of mine, um, people I still respect to this day, I just don't talk to them anymore, were raped um, by a woman. Um, she drugged their drinks, which is very easy to do, from someone who's had their drinks spiked, and I'm sure many of you have. Um, GHB, uh, Rufalin, all this kind of stuff, it's very easy to do, and essentially when you drug a, a male, there's this, there's this idea that you can't rape a guy because how would he, you know, physically implement that act, yeah, physically, how would he get it up? Well, that's not how GHB works. How GHB works is all your bodily functions are as they would normally be, but you're essentially not there. You're, you're basically, you can be led along as if you're on a leash, kind of like a, imagine as a drunk dog might do, but you're not drunk. to undertake everything that you normally undertake, you're just not com at all conscious. And that's why, of course, when people suffer from these things, you wake up in the morning and you have absolutely no memory whatsoever, because that's what these drugs do. But anyway, so two of my friends were um, uh, raped by this girl who was completely insane. She was 18 years old, had about, pff, bloody hell, about 30 tattoos, would slice her wrists every night. Uh, after she went for them and numerous other people that I'm aware of. Uh, even one night she was so obsessed with me for a moment that she took a fire extinguisher off the wall and was trying to bang my door down. Luckily nothing came of it and that was the end of that experience. But uh, uh, one of those chaps tried to kill himself by jumping in front of an ambulance. Um, thank God he's alright to this day. The other chap, both of them suffer from extreme depression. Uh, perhaps prior to that, and of course as a result of these things. Um, but what did the university do about that? They did nothing about that because it's a woman raping a man and they don't care. So then I went to another university, I went to Rishon, uh, one of the many I've just talked about, and uh, at this university there was also all these people obviously have mental health issues. I mean, the, 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 assailants um, but that doesn't excuse it if you kill someone you go to jail there's obviously a reason why you did it you know, you're not in the right frame of mind and we can understand that people that commit such atrocious acts aren't mentally uh, there as a normal person uh, it's but that doesn't excuse the act does it so anyway uh, at this university um, there were two girls 
both of whom are still there, as far as I'm aware, which is <laughs> disgusting. Um, one of these girls suffered from photoprognosia, which is a, uh, a, a disease is the wrong word, but it's an affliction that prevents you from recognizing uh, people, family members. You, you can't, you have no photo recognition. So uh, this particular person would have a picture of everyone they knew on their wall so that they could recognize them. Um, but anyway, again, it's not a, no excuse. This girl accused a chap that lived on the floor, very nice chap. I, friends with him, but he was a nice guy, uh, of rape, um, and the absurd thing is he wasn't even in the country uh, at the time, he was on holiday in Spain, um, many days before and after she presented this falsified allegation, and of course nothing came to it because of that. Did anything happen to her? No. Um, a friend of mine, and I'm sure you're watching this now, great guy, um, he was also accused of rape by the same girl. Uh, the, the, the hilarious thing about this is no one would go near these people, this, this particular woman, because she's obviously insane. And, you know, it just would never happen. And of course, nothing came of that as well, because it was a lie and there's no evidence for it. Um, but did anything happen to her? No. And the point is, when you accuse things of people of such crimes, especially men of rape, you know, that can destroy someone's image, someone's well-being. You know, that really, there's always the element of doubt in people's minds. And the only way you can try and remove that element of doubt is to prosecute the false accusation the, the, the accuser, the, the, the person that's falsified that allegation and nothing happens, why? Because it's a woman again my own experience at the university, I was accused of sexual assault by this girl who uh, it's quite a funny incident actually because there was me and a large group of girls came back from a night out uh, and in the kitchen this girl had bought two large Domino's pizzas and she had left them there we were all wasted, we came back, we saw pizza. What's the first thing you do? You fucking eat it. You're drunk as shit, you know. She comes in while we were all there, goes on a complete rage. This is a girl that had a criminal background for stabbing her ex-boyfriend with a screwdriver. She's completely insane, just like the other two. Uh, you know, she, everyone gets into an argument, we all leave. In the end, we were happy with apologizing, paying for the pizza, but she went to the extreme level that it ended up in a big argument and, uh, a couple of weeks go by and I get accused, not the girls of course, because you can't make that stick, of sexually assaulting her, which again there's no evidence for and nothing came of it because everybody knew she was a liar. But the point is, did anything happen to her? No. She's still at the university today. Nothing happened to her. So, absolutely obscene. Um, now, I want to get to the, the, the kind of the main tale of the story, which is the university I'm at now, which I won't name. Um, but this is obviously... Every year that surpasses my original uh, introductory year at university, this political agenda that we see everywhere, you know, political correctness, as it were, identity politics, extreme liberalism to the point where it is actually fascism. Um, every year that goes by, having been at a university for every single one of these years, I can see the difference. I can see the rise in mental health issues. It's extreme, by the way. I <laughs> Good God, I really like, you know, if you're a parent and you're watching this now, never send, ever send your children to university or college in this country. I really beg you to do that. Uh, I will never send my children to a university in this country, ever. Uh, sorry, I'm in Mexico now, but in the UK, ever. Um, aside from just complete substandard education, what your children will be taught is pure propaganda. Um, and that goes for the United States as well, which I've just completed an exchange at. Um, to give you an idea, if you know anything about philosophy and you know some of the greatest philosophers of the time, you know Schopenhauer, Kant, uh, Karl Marx, uh, a lot of them are German, um, Heigl, Heidegger. The Americans had removed um, Nietzsche, another one, every single one of those philosophy syllabus, because none of those philosophers their perspective to the, the political agenda that the United States is trying to secrete onto uh, its student populace. Um, the same goes for the UK, although it's not as bad in the UK, academically speaking, yet. Um, but uh, yes, at this university that I'm at now, um, so many men have had their lives fucking destroyed. And I put a post up recently, uh, joined to a Guardian article, I hate the Guardian, but it was an interesting article. But this particular university now, so many men have had their lives destroyed, really destroyed. Um, a really good friend of mine, and I hope you're watching this, I'm not going to name you, great human being, highly intelligent, 
far surpassing anyone's intellect at that university. This guy was accused of rape by a girl that had already accused someone else of rape. Uh, there's absolutely no evidence for it, so nothing's been proven because it never happened. Um, and yet, because it never happened with no evidence, the university uh, restricted his movements within the campus, not hers. Um, and from what I understand, the police, although again there's no evidence, so nothing's you know, happened, have restricted his movements within the county. And there is no evidence for this. It just never happened. It's a complete lie. And it's, you come across these crazy delusional girls, are usually drug addicts, as this person is, um, and they are obviously suffering from mental health issues, and they're waiting for whatever it is, I don't know the psychology of this person, but to get attention, because perhaps they're completely intoxicated under this paraphernalia at the time, that they're unaware of what they're doing or saying, they create these false phone accusations. Um, so that's one instance. Uh, another crazy lunatic girl who's still at this university today, even though I don't think she's completed a single year yet, and she may be watching this now. Um, sure she's aware that she's not all there, uh, has accused other chaps of similar things, again with no evidence, and of course it's always been the chaps that have to uh, submit to the force of this political doctrine, having their lives ruined and tainted and reputation utterly destroyed, you know, they can't walk outside without people thinking, oh, what if you did it, when they didn't. Um, the first year of this university, there was a crazy girl, but she's left the university, thankfully, now. And uh, she would come to our flat because she knew a few people. We didn't realise how crazy she was at the time. And she would violently, I would say violently, that's wrong, aggressively hit on every single guy. Uh, thankfully, we were all of a kind of higher age, you know, we were all in our mid 20s, and we were aware that you know, she wasn't particularly all there. And absolutely, we would not go near that anyway because she was, frankly, not a good looking girl. But she would hit on every single person. Eventually, she she gave up and uh, she went to uh, she found another student who was not autistic, um, you know, almost I wouldn't say severe learning difficulties, but you know, socially inept. It's you know, obvious autism. And uh, he she invited him back to his room and he kissed her on the cheek. Uh, and uh, she just went, no, why, why did you do that or something like that? And uh, because she wanted the attention, then she went to the police the next day and accused this guy, who's one of the most popular people at this university, is absolutely lovely. Uh, he, she accused him of rape. And uh, and then so the police came along and they arrested him, in front of everyone, by the way, with no evidence again. They went back to the station and then, of course, she buckled. She, she you know, um, made the whole thing up. The girls that lived in her flat, because it was an all-female flat, they knew she made the whole thing up. That before the police even came to arrest that guy, every single one of those girls went to the university and told them that they didn't want to live with her and that they were moving out instantaneously, which they did, leaving her by herself in that flat. They said that she was a liar and that she was crazy and she was making all this stuff up. What did the university do? Nothing. They left her on the campus in that building all by herself because no one else wants to live with her. Uh, and again, when the police found out that she was lying, uh, that was the end of it. Well, that was the end of the case. Did she get anything? No. <laughs> she lied to the police. She accused a guy of rape. Could have ruined his life. Thankfully, you know, people knew who he was. But what if they didn't? What if you know he was a quieter person that kept himself to himself? There might still be that that you know the, uh, questioning mindset over over this act. And you know, no one lived with her. And in the end, she left the university because no one would speak to her because everyone knew she was a liar. But the police did nothing. The university didn't even chuck her out. This is ridiculous. You know. <laughs> And I, I've seen, so, there's so many other occasions of this that I could see, and you know, I'm not saying that, that genuine assaults don't happen to both men and women, um, but what I'm saying is that the treatment of men at university, at university, and we could go, I want to make another video about what's happening outside of university and in greater society as well, but at university, how men are treated is absolutely appalling, it's absolutely disgusting. Now I'll get to my recent experience, which is hilarious. I think I will post this to the university staff. Um, so I've had many experiences at the university. I'm at now. I was accused of a hate crime against Welsh people, which is just utterly absurd. The police even came to the university. And they're like, "Did you say this?" Uh, no. And they're like, "Okay," and they left. But that was like the first thing on their agenda. Like none of the serious crimes that are happening in the area in which I study. There's gun crime. There was a murder. Um, you know, they're, they're more intent on these falsified little hate crimes. That, insecure students put upon others that uh, they don't like or that offend them in some way. But uh, more recently, uh, as part of the exchange um, relating to, to this home UK university in the US, um, I was at a fraternity party outside of the university, by the way. It has nothing to do with the university. 
I was at a party and uh, there's this drunk girl, drunk Ivorian girl, so that's someone from the Ivory Coast, she's on a full scholarship because she's black. Um, and I say that because the university in question, and I talk about in the US, even gives scholarships to gay people that have, um, sorry, I can't think of the word, but uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, um, a, a ranking that you have in the US. What's the word I'm thinking of? Um, it's basically like your exam results at high school, like the grade you get. So they blow the grade by 50% for those that are gay to get into university. So essentially, they're discriminating against everybody else that isn't homosexual by issuing full scholarships to homosexuals that get half the grades that someone else that would normally apply for a scholarship would be uh, would be, be uh, opting for. If that's explained correctly. Anyway, so there's this um, drunk Ivorian girl at this frat party. She put down a bottle of vodka every time she turned up to one of these parties. I'd seen her before, and likewise, she beat some by many others. Wasn't liked by virtually anyone there. Uh, she had four complaints by uh, against her at this particular fraternity, and the party that I'd seen her at before, she would jump on the kitchen table and just decimate and destroy this person's house. Uh, I very much doubt they'd be getting their deposit back, which in the US probably isn't cheap. Um, but anyway, she came up to me, she was wasted, and she just slapped me in the face. Never spoken to her before in my life. I only seen her once before. She just slapped me in the face, and me, being a frank person, I went, "What the fuck do you think you're doing? You can't do that." Blah 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 blah. Uh, I'll be reporting you to the police tomorrow. You know, I don't take that. You can't get away with it just because of your your creed. And it's ironic because that's exactly what she used. She realised, hey, I've got a once in a lifetime opportunity here. What I did that other night against that guy is going to go against me. How can I get out of it? I've just assaulted someone. What can I use to get out of it? Otherwise, I'm going to lose my scholarship in the US. Let's accuse this guy of... Now, I don't know to this day what she's accused me of, but I, the only thing that could possibly work is if she said racism. That's really the only thing that she could possibly have used that would give her a chance at getting out of this scenario. So, um... I didn't go to the police in the end because, yeah, it's a waste of time. Why would I, you know, let things blow over the next morning once you've got to sleep? Um, just try and avoid people like that in the future and hope they've learned their lesson. But, of course, in this instance, they didn't because they're a manipulator. So I end up getting multiple emails telling me to come to this university representative, this welfare officer, or whatever. And, uh, and at the time, I didn't really know what it was about because uh, they didn't specify. Um, but the more emails they sent and eventually they sent me a letter and this is unbelievable they actually named the individual in the letter now i didn't know the name of this person but i asked around and apparently it was this girl from the party so then i put two and two together i'm not a stupid person and i realized that this is exactly what she's done um so i was getting spammed with letters you know not professional ones things that were extremely biased uh, someone makes an accusation against someone it's an accusation until it's proven you treat both parties equally um, I regret to this day I don't go to that police. She should be in jail and she should have lost her scholarship for assault. Um, I mean, she was the one that was thrown out of the party as well, which says quite a lot about her reputation. That God, it's getting quite hot now, that's why I'm moving a bit. But uh, anyway, uh, long story short, nothing happened about that because being an older student and being experienced with this, uh, I went to the university's own legal team and discovered, having presented uh, the case, and it really was a case, I printed everything off, I gave my testimony and what I thought this was about, and this lovely lawyer, um, who was highly intelligent, realised this was complete nonsense, and told me that the lady in question, who was with the welfare department, had already breached um, the university's own policy by issuing a letter to me, uh, without even interviewing me at this point, interviewing, god that's really what it's coming to isn't it, this terminology, interviewing, um, and nothing happened about that, but you know what they did, they sent that letter, or this this welfare team, to my university, they sent these lies, something which never happened, um, I'm the gracious one for letting this, you know, lunatic get off the chain and, and not be prosecuted and be reprimanded by the university, but aside from the fact that this was sent to my own university, who which usually, yeah, I suppose, you know, if you get a letter from another universe, you kind of take it as a, as a given, like something did happen, because you don't expect that level of stupidity. But this is the United States we're talking about here. This is, you know, the extreme lefty university campus. Um, you know, everything you see in these kind of, like, funny YouTube videos where people go around taunting SJWs and snowflakes, that's, that's really the reality. 
Um, and I was in a conservative state as well, a conservative Christian, uh, not Christian entirely, but I won't want to give you any ideas exactly where I was, but a, a religious institution, and it was still extremely left. So just imagine what happens if you go to L.A. or New York, bloody hell. Um, so yeah, uh, and now it looks like this university that I'm at in the UK, with no evidence, no reason, is trying to pick at me, reprimand me in some way for something that never happened. None of these accusations that have been put upon myself or other people I have known, both at the university I'm at now, the one I was at on this exchange, or in the past, have ever happened. Every single one of them, from my experience, has been a lie. And that's not to say genuine things don't happen, but all these experiences, extreme accusations as well, have all been falsified. And the assailants, or the liars, the falsifiers, have never, ever had anything done to them. No reprimand for the lie, even when the lies have been proven. They've never been reprimanded. And that is what university culture is coming to now. Um, in the West, in the UK, and, and you know, you see it in Germany as well. I've been to many uni uh, German universities, so I have friends there. And, you know, it, I wouldn't say it's as bad just because their standard of education is far higher, but it's getting there. Um, but yeah, I just really wanted to share that with you guys about how the extremity of what we're seeing at university, the political agenda that's being put forth, and it's come from the very top, believe me. You see it with the police, you see it with the uh, ministers of parties at the university, the deans, all this. This is, I don't want to use the word conspiracy, this is a program, this is an agenda. Um, and it's to split and segregate society, that's what it's all about. But, you know, I hope it was interesting to listen to, because everything I've said is, you know, from my own experience and my own heart, and I felt the need to share it. And I hope the people that have been accused, good friends of mine, and uh, some of them have just kind of, you know, doesn't bother them anymore. Um, they've got past that. Uh, but the ones that haven't, you know, you're a thousand times better than any of these people will ever be. So, you know, I hope you uh, continue on in the right path. All the best from uh, Mexico, which is lovely here. Bye.